I'd like to really extend to you a very warm welcome and thank you for joining me here at Semana de Alimentación Viva. This program is especially designed for all of you that are inclined to consider a living food lifestyle. And it really gives me particular privilege to be able to be a part of this program, to share um, alongside all of the other distinguished uh, educators that are bringing you really life-saving information. I am here uh, at present in Peru, and here in Peru, I really would say that uh, this is truly the capital <laughs> of, uh, of mega nutrition when it comes to, you know, the global uh, natural food scene. You know, the choices here are just unbounded. And particularly for what I'm sharing with you, it is quite appropriate to share it with you from this particular uh, perspective, from the point of view of Peru. Peru, the land of ancient uh, food civilizations uh, with the Inca Empire that has brought us so much wonderful uh, agricultural foundations for us to uh, really do some of the things that we're doing today. And particularly here in Peru today, there's quite a bit of uh, boundless, you know, offerings of fresh food. You know, as you can see here in my kitchen in Lima, in Miraflores, uh, where I am uh, being hosted by the uh, Arbol de la Vida, uh, we're doing some presentations uh, on food preparation uh, and orthomolecular nutrition as it relates to living food. We're also having a, a retreat here, a living food retreat, a detox program. And there's no better place to do it uh, when it comes to the food options that are available to detox the body. So uh, from the point of view of orthomolecular nutrition, which is basically centered around the uh, the whole idea of you know feeding the body on a certain level so that it can uh, really recalibrate itself. You know, there's so much that we need to consider when it comes to uh, our mental clarity our moods, you know, and how uh, food plays a role in all of this. So we're really talking about optimum nutrition for life, you know, when it comes to uh, looking at it from the orthomolecular perspective. Uh, we're ultimately really talking about uh, nutritional chemistry that supports, you know, our life. You know, it... it it's really very, very effective when we look at the body the way it is uh, recognized today as a temple of disease and looking to detox or cleanse the body, to heal the body. First, we must allow the body to have that fighting chance. We must readjust the chemistry of the body. And in readjusting the chemistry of the body, uh, a juice detox is very effective. A juice detox is very important because here in doing a juice detox, uh, what we want to do is really rid the body of unwanted waste. So along with providing, you know, uh, optimal nutritional concentration, uh, the orthomolecular uh, approach also deals with detoxification because they really come hand in hand you know as it is said in ancient tradition you know our food shall be our medicine and our medicine shall be our food so to remove toxic molecules from our individual body there's no better way to do it than to just flush it out you know and it's safe it's effective and 
beyond all of that, you know, it's very reasonable. So we, and it's something that we can do ourselves, you know, uh, to be able to remove heavy metals, uh, lead, mercury, aluminum, arsenic, and all of these things through a natural uh, juice flush, natural juice detoxification, giving the body fresh nutrients from plants, uh, fruits, vegetables, leaves, roots, you name it, that are bounded with minerals, vitamins, uh, phytochemicals, uh, electrolytes, all of the unseeing and, you know, uh, very powerful uh, elements that we actually eat food for. And this is really one of the reasons why most of us are quite ill today, because we are lacking in these uh, very powerful uh, micronutrients and things of that level that is not uh, facilitated by the traditional uh, basically meat and potato, you know, bean and rice uh, lifestyle that we have been dealing with primarily today. So this approach is, is, is just a very vigilant, you know, attempt to identify, you know, chemicals in, in the environment, toxins in the environment, toxins that come through our diet, uh, which, you know, may affect us in very negative ways, you know, such as things that are found, uh, elements that are found in things like wheat and rye and barley, these gluten uh, ele uh, bound products, you know, which create, you know, quite a bit of uh, challenge in our intestinal system. Uh, so because they destroy the, the villi in the system that cause, that, that uh, produce, creates malabsorption of vitamin, uh, vital nutrients that are required uh, uh, to really uh, activate uh, neurotransmitters, you know, like dopamine and serotonin. So when it comes to the whole issue of neurotransmitters, uh, the, uh, the imbalances and defects that we find uh, based on, you know, the, 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 these neurotransmitters having been affected, you know, may be uh, classified as mental illness and, you know, other issues that may not really necessarily be... Uh, be the proper classification because then there's quite a few of uh, medical intrusion that ends up taking place. So, you know, to think that someone has something wrong with their mind uh, uh, because the, 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 you know, first of all, the brain is part of the body, <laughs> you know, and this physical organ, the brain, we, uh, requires proper molecular structure, uh, chemistry in order to work uh, effectively. So since the brain houses our thoughts and, you know, it's the coordinator for our senses, a chemically imbalanced or toxic brain would express itself by disordered thoughts, you know, uh, anger, anxiety, depression, and things like that, uh, uh, sensory dis disturbances, hallucinations, and things of that nature. And then you know, then become there. Then the medical invasion starts to take place. So I think it's important, though, that we uh, look at the diet relationship. You know, for optimal health. You know, uh, I mean, this is something that has been happening through throughout recorded history uh, by some of you know the uh, the greatest uh, recognized uh, practitioners. Uh, number one being Imhotep, who came out of uh, ancient uh, Kemet or ancient Egypt, uh, and a lot of his knowledge was studied by people like uh, Hippocrates and Pythagoras, you know. So we're talking, you know, over 2,500 years ago, you know, uh, up to 5,000 years ago, where records have shown that specific foods uh, were used to treat uh, medical uh, conditions, especially, you know, psychological conditions. So why not uh, do that today? You know, we, we have quite a vast uh, array of foods available to us 
that have not only nutritional values, but also have quite a bit of very powerful uh, medicinal or healing qualities of, of, as well. You know, one of uh, society's modern, you know, uh, genius, uh, Linus uh, Pauling, uh, has expressed this. And this is where we get the whole beginning of the approach of orthomolecular nutrition based on, on his uh, observations. So basically, it's all about varying the, 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 uh, the concentrations of the substances that are normally present in the, in the human body to control uh, diseases, basically. So if it's a certain vitamin that is lacking, uh, that creates a certain condition, a certain minerals that is lacking, or toxins that are irritating the system, that are, that, that are leaving waste behind, that are blocking, congesting, and stagnating, then there is foods. <laughs> there are foods that have what it takes to unclog to, 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 to open up, you know, the channel to, to, uh, to remedy, you know, the situation, whether it's affecting the brain, it's affecting some other organ, the kidneys, the lungs, uh, you name it. So rather than using these powerful uh, synthetic drugs, which basically, uh, you know, has been proven to really not be that effective, that powerful, they just really control and suppress, you know, uh, symptoms uh, pretty much more so than doing anything else. So, you know, so uh, Dr. Pauling has reached the conclusion that, you know, it, it is best uh, to treat people uh, with this nutritional uh, science, which he terms as orthomolecular uh, therapy. And there's really, uh, today, the advent of the living food diet, the living food the lifestyle, the raw food, you know, culture, uh, really is quite timely, because there's no other approach to eating, to dining, to feasting, <laughs> you know, to gorging on food. You know, or just simply just, you know, uh, just taking care of one's basic, you know, uh, nutritional need. There's no better approach that brings together or typifies, you know, the, 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 the values of the science of orthomolecular nutrition, which basically uh, it just aims to, to restore you know, the optimum environment of the body by correcting the imbalances of deficiencies based on the individual's biochemistry, using substances natural to the body, such as vitamins, minerals, you know, amino acids, trace elements, and fatty acids. And these all can be found in food. So rather than uh, just going, subscribing to, you know, uh, the, the, the nutritional supplements that have been uh, processed, manufactured, which works quite well in many cases, but we can step back a little further and just deal with the food, deal with the whole food, deal with the whole plant before it, it, it has been processed. So the key idea, you know, in this type of, of nutrition approach is, is that, you know, uh, genetic factors, uh, not affect not only the physical characteristics of the individual, but also their biochemical uh, makeup. So biochemical pathways of the body have significant genetic variability and diseases such as arteriosclerosis, cancer, schizophrenia, depressions, are associated with specific biochemical abnormalities, which are casual or combining factors of practically all illnesses. So, you know, here we go forward now, uh, looking to, you know, protect and enhance our health through natural remedies, fresh remedies, live foods, fresh juices that are made from 
from leaves, from fruits, from tubers that contain these minerals, these phytochemicals, the, 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 the vitamins, and all of these elements, the trace elements, the, the fatty acids contain all of these things. And not only in a juice form, but just even in a salad, in a blended form, uh, using nut meats and uh, pâtés and uh, soups and shakes and <laughs> you name it. You know, here we go. You know, nature's pharmacy. You know, just straight out of the land, straight from the from from the bush. So, you know, one doctor, uh, I believe his name was Abram Hoffer puts it quite clearly. He says, orthomolecular treatment does not lend itself to rapid drug-like controlled symptoms, but patients get well to a degree not seen by tranquilizer therapies who believe orthomolecular therapists are prone to exaggeration. So many of these traditional medical doctors, institutions feel that orthomolecular scientists are really off which is fine if they want to go that route. But now here we are, the living food uh, movement or the living food science that have taken now orthomolecular to another level where we don't have to necessarily look at it as medicine. We're just looking at it strictly as food because that's all we're dealing with is food. And it's basically all about uh fresh food, you know, so, you know, it's about getting into the gut of the human being, you know, looking at, at hormones and neurotransmitters, you know, which, which are generated in the gut and interact with our organs, such as, uh, with our organs, such as the lungs and the heart. So there's a lot of research out there that, that, uh, you know, that, that are showing how the gut affects the bodily functions even beyond the digestive system you know so the gut is the pit this is where it all brews this is where it all boils this is where it all turns so it's all about what you eat that we have to look at you know so there's studies that are supporting this there's studies studies that are shown very direct links you know from the gut's health to bone formation to learning and memory, you know, and to even conditions including Parkinson's disease and so forth and so on. Even up to, to, to in, in these days, you know, research have shown, you know, that uh, there's, that we just disrupting the, the, the stomach or intestinal bacteria can prompt depression and anxiety. You know, and this has been shown in, in lab rats, you know, quite a few times. So better understanding the communication between the gut and the brain and the rest of the body uh, could really help to reveal and show the causes and treatments of a whole range of ailments and provide, you know, doctors with really what it takes to move beyond where we're going, you know, so... A lot of these mental diseases, a lot of these uh, diseases that affect, you know, critical organs don't have to uh, be treated the way they have been treated. You know, there are people like myself, you know, today who are living examples. I am 69 years old, you know, and I are actually 69 years of being, neither old nor young necessarily, but, uh, but I'm not ill. <laughs> You know, as my other contemporaries at similar age or close age, even younger than me, uh, are, are really, you know, suffering from a whole array of uh, life-threatening diseases, you know, consuming all fresh living plant foods for the past 40 years have brought me into a position where I have really you know, shown the value of eating this way to defend your life. <laughs> you know, I started off doing this back in the, in the 1960s. Uh, it's been 46 years now where since I've not consumed any animal products whatsoever, 
So my body is very low. The toxic level of my body is very low. My body is very low in toxemia. And toxemia is definitely, you know, the root cause of, of practically most diseases, especially life-threatening diseases that are facing humanity today. So to, to, to follow these examples of not only myself, but other people who have come before me and other people who are walking alongside me, practicalizing this lifestyle, you know, it's, it's quite a, a, a wealth, you know, for humanity to take a minute and stop and listen and observe the same way we give the doctors, the medical institutions a certain type of respect. We need to give nature, we need to give life, you know, equal level of respect and observe, you know, what is going on. The power of life, the power of nature, the power of the, of the plants, you know, to be able to do these types of things for us and bring us into a certain level where, you know, people like myself at this age uh, is is not suffering from, uh, you know, or being threatened by Alzheimer's and, you know, other mental issues or cancer and things of that nature. So uh, eating raw foods is natural. <laughs> you know, we've come on this planet, we've been on this planet, you know, for at least a million years without, you know, uh, with, and, and survive marvelously without the use of fire for probably hundreds of thousands of years before we figured out the use of fire. So obviously we never ate uh, no cooked foods prior to the advent of fire. So our, our bodies thrive best on fresh and vital nutrition. So uh, a, 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 a raw food diet or increasing the amount of raw food that you, you don't have to necessarily go 100% is, is actually definitely gonna make you feel better, uh, look better, <laughs> and also increase your level of well-being. This is something that, you know, there's no doubt about, <laughs> you know, there's no denying. This is something that is seen every day, today, in hundreds of thousands of people who are, are subscribing and adapting or adopting to this uh, lifestyle that are showing how you know marvelous it is to free themselves of certain life-threatening disease just through basically cutting out you know uh devitalized foods highly processed chemicalized foods uh animal products you know uh animal flesh and things of that nature and increasing the amount of fresh living plant foods. So uh, these are unprocessed foods or uncooked foods as you know it, as you know cooking, because these foods have actually been cooked by the sun and we definitely want them to be uh, organic, uh, as much organic as pos possible. That is our, uh, our, uh, our objective is to have them grown without chemical fertilizers and pesticides and things of that nature uh, besides being unprocessed. So we're really basically talking about fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, nuts, seeds, uh, grains, some dried fruits, uh, fresh juices, and, uh, you know, even water from coconut, <laughs> you know. The young coconut, you know, uh, this is like really great, pristine, uh, highly mineralized water that has minerals in an organic form that the body can utilize. Loads of electrolytes. You know, we're talking about foods that are high in 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 phytochemicals. You know, friendly bacteria and things of this nature to protect the body, to allow the body to really have a fighting chance to pretty much uh, heal itself. So basically we're uh, talking about a vegetarian diet, foods that vegetate. You know, we're not talking about fish. <laughs> we're not talking about dairies. We're not talking about eggs and cheese and milks and things of that, of that nature. Uh, 
the, these foods, you know, they promote life. Living foods promote life. You know, they, they contain the maximum amount of fiber, <laughs> you know, that especially, you know, just looking at simple raw produce, you know, tomatoes and lettuce and cucumbers and apples and pineapples, pears and peaches and spinach, you know, highly uh, high fiber foods, you know, and these fibers have not been lost through the processing through the, 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 the cooking and the boiling and the baking and the microwaving and things of that nature, and even through freezing that does uh, affect the fiber in foods. So these foods are easily metabolized uh, in the body, and they also tend to be uh, lower in calories, you know, than the average diet. So the point is, is to uh, not to heat these foods above, say, a... Uh, uh, 118, 120 degrees, as low as 115 is, is great, you know, so that we don't destroy the enzymes. We don't destroy the life-giving fo fo uh, force in the foods that actually aids in their digestion and the absorption of the foods in our body, uh, because cooking, besides destroying these vital elements, they also destroy the, uh, the nutritional value of the food as well. So we really need to be extremely careful uh, as we approach this lifestyle and uh, understand that also when we consuming foods like this now, after consuming the standard, traditional, you know, meat and potato style diet, is that, hey, now this food that is coming into our body, we're talking particularly or primarily any fresh fruits, vegetables, grains, seeds, beans, nuts, legumes, young coconut, the milk or water from the young coconut, and uh, even seaweeds and things of this nature. These are the things that are on our menu. So your choice may, may depend on, on certain factors, you know, uh, and, you know, you may even want to use things like sprouted uh, brown rice, you know, uh, cabbage which supports uh, cellular function the, uh, the, 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 the 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 glucose in the brown rice helps to, to improve the uh, the metabolism and its absorption and uh, the, the 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 cabbage in the form of say a sauerkraut you know uh, helps support healthy cellular function uh, and also the the, the uh, things like the, the uh, radishes and some of these hot foods and, you know, pungent, powerful, you know, foods have a lot of antioxidants, you know, so uh, they really help protect our cellular the function of our cells of the body. There are certain other foods, uh, plant foods, direct common foods like carrots, you know, which are a great source of vitamin A and uh, they, they help to protect our vision as well and also our carbo, carbovascular system. So if we look at pretty much every single fresh plant food, we're going to find, you know, there's medicine in these foods. You know, it's, it's not unusual when you uh, start eating a lot of fruits that you start having diarrhea, you start having the runs, you start having some cleansing naturally, but many of us tend to misinterpret that. And... Uh, feel that these foods are ne having a negative effect on our body because we're not used to uh, doing uh, so much evacuation. So, you know, sprouts, another great bountiful of foods, you know, sprouts themselves, especially, you know, we're talking about using organic seeds, uh, which are, you know, they have great... Uh, levels of vitamins, minerals, proteins, trace minerals, chlorophyll, that green pigment, you know, in sprouts, uh, when they're exposed to, to sunlight, you know, the enzymes, these are all basically, <laughs> and ideally, natural supplements. So, you know, we, we, we can do this on a practical level, on a home-based level, you know, we don't have to have all of the sophisticated, expensive package products, you know. And this is one of the dangers also that I see even creeping into the uh, living food culture as well, 
a lot of the living foods are not living anymore. There's so much dehydrated, powdered, you know, processed things. Yes, some may be superfood. That's fine. Those you take in small amounts, they supplement your basic uh, eating, you know, your basic diet, the, the basic, you know, lettuce and tomatoes and apples and pears and peaches and quinoa, you know, grains, fine grains, the nuts, the seeds, and things like that. When you start reaching for some little powder called superfoods or whatever it may call, you know, then you're really just supplementing. Those are not, you know, solid stuff that you can eat, you know, a big bowl of, of maca, you know, concentrated. But besides being super expensive, you know, uh, we also have to be careful how we approach it. You know, small amounts, not only of superfoods and all of these energy boosters and things like that, but even small amounts of meals, period. You know, the days of, you know, gorging on a big, overflown, flowing plate, <laughs> you know, with lots of carbs and fats, and proteins and things like that, those days are over. Look at where it has gotten us. You know, we're obese, 